Hello traders, this is Rich from TradeSite. This is the market preview for Wednesday, June 12, 2013. We uh, had camouflage sell signals across the board yesterday, and uh, they definitely uh, were uh, influencing the market play today. We were down pretty substantially across the board here today. We were down on all three sides, the ES, the NQ, and the YM futures, and the uh, market internals took, a, took another very, very hard hit. So the uh, the tape has has definitely turned more negative today, uh, as we uh, are retesting the high, but are failing. So let's take a look at the uh, current state of the ES futures. So here's a look at the ES futures. We can see that we had the uh, camouflage sell signal yesterday. We had a very substantial gap down uh, today in today's session, and we essentially really didn't do too much and really move away from the open. They tried higher prices, but they were rejected and ultimately stuffed back down again. Uh, Near-term resistance is going to be uh, yesterday's high, 16.46 or so. We're going to have support at today's low, and also that gap fill from the previous day at about 16.22, and then more substantial support at the 50 DMA. Over on the NQ side, the NQs had had a pretty much uh, similar design. The ES futures closed above the day's open so they're a little bit stronger on on a, on a technical basis than the uh, than the broad market side but they were uh, definitely lower on the day nonetheless closed a little bit below the 8 ace level of 2968 and the other key feature is that uh, we're still waiting for that 13 exhaustion that'll print when we get a settlement above 1301 in the NQ futures resistance is, is going, near term resistance is going to remain at this uh, plus one eighth level which is approximately the previous day's high 3008 near term support is going to be the low settlement on this move so far 2937 then we've got the seven eighths level and then much more serious support at the 50 DMA that's rising at the moment without a doubt the uh, the most important technical feature today was the intermarket action in the very very weak uh, posture that that they had the uh, New York Stock Exchange cumulative advanced decline line took a big hit today we're minus 2300 issues which is a very very negative reading what that did was roll the roll the chart back down to the low of the move and is, is really threatening to uh, really pick up some speed to the downside here so definitely uh, keep an eye on the advanced decline lines, even intraday, which will really help us out. While they were trying to uh, push the market up intraday today and, and get towards that gap fill, uh, at trade set we were not looking for a gap fill and for it to get long at that point, we were really looking for the market to fail and roll back down because the, at that time, the uh, intraday advanced decline line was still very, very negative. Here you can see the stocks versus the NDX took a really big hit. The stocks were very, very weak today and uh, rolled back down after uh, penetrating uh, this key level but not really being able to make good and, and really follow through above it. So all we've done is basically just come up to tag it. Here's a look at the uh, the daily time frame, uh, the weekly time frame that is. Uh, tag it and start to roll back down. So this is not a breakout of this key, of this key ratio and we're still struggling here. The 10-day trend is uh, is still relatively neutral. We're at you know 0.96 or so. So there's plenty of room before we can reach up to this 1.35 oversold threshold. So if the market does want to adopt a negative posture, there's a lot of room here before the market uh, reaches that classic oversold indication of 1.35 or greater in the 10-day trend. As far as the uh, as far as the Individual sector goes they're all they're all negative on the day. Uh, the BTK was a little bit less negative than uh, the BKX, the banks that is, because the, the uh, BKX didn't have that uh, that big sharp hit that the biotechs took the day before, so they're really just kind of catching up. We're negative across the board. There's really no flight to safety here in the uh, in the in the XAU index. The XAU was still very very negative. It didn't uh, didn't pick up a bid on any kind of flight to quality. So really, this is just probably the beginning of, of some more negative activity just because we haven't seen any real rotation just yet. For now, everybody's just pulling bids from uh, from most of the asset classes across the board. The only thing that was really attracting capital today was the uh, was the, was the was the bond complex and especially the uh, the government securities. Here's a look at the SPX TLT ratio, and you can see that it took a very very sharp sharp hit. 
We've got a potential double top in place here at range high. We just really have to see if this most recent low gets taken out. If this most recent low gets taken out, that's going to be a very, very negative development, and we're really going to see uh, the market taking an aggressive risk off posture if that's happening. Uh, this, this is because the S&P is starting to uh, release capital and is flowing into the more uh, risk-averse asset classes like the, uh, like the government bonds. Now here are the individual sectors sorted on a on a on a best performance basis to worst performance. Um, mostly the uh, defensive stocks were really the best, except for the airlines. But the airlines are just, they just kind of do their own thing. So the uh, pharmaceuticals were fairly strong. The utilities were fairly strong. The uh, bottom of the list was the uh, XAU, which is, continues to be a uh, source of funds. Uh, frustratingly, so waiting for that reversal. The SOX was uh, was also very, very weak. Housing sector was weak, and the BKX was weak. So those are all, this is all kind of a really, really negative uh, setup here as far as the uh, overall flight to quality goes and the, and the rotation that you're looking for. What you really want to see at this point is you really want to see the the uh, transportations come on and, and the uh, energy stocks really start to uh, start lifting the market and absorbing some of this negative uh, negative selling. A couple things to keep in mind here, the computer hardware index is now 12 days up. That's the HWI and the Seeker. It's already 13 days up on the Comer. The uh, BKX is 10 days up as far as the Seeker goes and it's 12 days up in the uh, Comer. The SOX is 13 days up in the Comer and 11 days up in the uh, in the Seeker study. So there's a lot of the major very very important sectors that are very they're very close to uh, flashing some uh, some pretty important reversal warnings and if that happens then it's going to really uh, start to weigh on the market as we start losing leadership from all the classic groups here's a look at the oil futures the oil futures uh, here the QM's the mini futures are just kind of just kind of nowhere here uh, we're below the 6 ace level and below the active static trend line but we're still holding above that 4 ace level uh, that's very very prevalent and important in the uh, Murray math box so once we once we cross one of those two levels we'll have a, a, a much more definitive look and a better handle on which direction oil wants to go right now it's just kind of churning the uh, gold futures were a little bit lower on the day but uh, but still hovering right around that 1375 area 1375 is that zero race level on the Murray math box and certainly uh, certainly uh, key support for now hasn't really pivoted uh, to make to make good on uh, this double bottom yet, but that's still potentially in the uh, in the cards, so don't rule that out. Well, as always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich for Trade Site. Hopefully, we'll see you tomorrow.